Hey everybody, uh, it's Michael from BoJMR. I'm just doing a quick, quick, quick little um, review, Michael's movie review. Me and Kitty here, she's bathing herself and watching. We have been watching Ferris Bueller's Day Off and uh, I thought I'd just do a quick review of it. Um, I've never seen or read any of the fan theories on it and that's going to come into play here in a second but i really enjoy ferris bueller's day off and not only because it's a john hughes movie from the 80s which i'm always a big fan of it's just kind of a kind of just every teenage kid's fantasy of the ultimate senior skip day um Everything works out for him. He gets to see the coolest stuff. You know, he gets to go to the top of the World Trades, or uh, excuse me, Sears Tower, which of course is now called the Willis Tower, but it's all, it will always be the Sears Tower to me, for instance. Uh, they go to, what is that, the Chicago Museum of Natural Fine Art, uh, go eat at a fancy smancy restaurant, get to, you know, be super snooty to a super snooty guy. Uh, of course, go to a baseball game. All kinds of fun st stuff to do that would just be an amazing actual day out. But everything seems to go, just seems to go a little too perfect. And part of it, as I know, because it's a movie and you kind of have to dis suspend belief about it. And part of the reason why I'm going to have this this theory about the movie is the scene with the parade downtown that is just a little too convenient to me it's how this there's no way that the entire surrounding area of the parade all happens to start dancing to Twist and Shout, which I believe, now uh, you can correct me in the comments, I believe they used the version from the Beatles. Because he mentioned something about being a big fan of John Lennon and the Beatles. Um, and so here's my theory. Ferris really was sick. He was not BSing that. Um, the whole movie is he's in bed sick all day and he's having a very lucid dream brought on by an extreme illness because everything works out little too perfect and especially the part with the parade. That's I, I, I don't buy that part. If, if it was a real movie, he was really awake, that's just a little too convenient. And if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Everybody in the city is dancing to Twist and Shout. Makes no sense whatsoever. And the part with Cameron coming to his realization about his entire life. I don't know. Maybe he's actually concerned about his friend. And in this lucid dream, he comes up with a way to really get his friend out of his funk and be able to stand up to his dad and have a talk to him. Now, I don't mean by destroying his 1961 Ferrari but just, you know, tell him, hey, you need to stand up to your dad. You need to do this. Um, so that's my theory. Um, overall, I love the flick. No, whether it's a, a, a weird theory or not, it's a great flick. Um, so much fun. I plan next spring to go to Chicago and actually have Ferris Bueller's Day Off and go see everything that he saw 
try to go find a lot of the sets, uh, a lot of the location shots, and have my own day off. It'll be Michael Robbins' day off. So thanks for watching. Blessed be. Good night.